All right, our final new speaker of the morning here, Wayne, I'll now ask Wayne to come up here, um, is the president, CEO, founder, purchaser, original <laughs> creator of Blacklands Railroad, and he, uh, they are, now they, they are presence in Churchill County as Black Gold Terminals, they're a seat of business council <coughs> member who is uh, looking to expand their operations here, and when it comes to logistics and supply chain, I really actually, I, I'm keen in on that slide that you had, George, where it showed the new hay and how it was just the smallest of improvement on the slide. And in a larger, maybe more urban economy and such, that doesn't, that could be, that'll be absorbed. But in a rural area like ours, a community like ours, uh, as I like to say, one space or one person can transform the entire community. And a little bit of, of, of leverage like that can transform it as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to Wayne here to talk about what he does on the supply chain side, logistics side, I did promise to, I tell him, I've known Wayne for almost a year, just a couple months short maybe, and um, how he got into uh, owning his own railroad. Uh, is he, like, he worked for the railroad, he liked trains, and about 20 years ago, he bought one, bought a railroad, and I thought that was pretty neat because I would do the same thing. I had that kind of cash flow, so here you are, Wayne. All right. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, hopefully... I'm, I'm kind of a loud talker, at least that's what my wife says, so I don't know if I'll use this very much or not, but um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Nate and his crew for putting this together. I think this is real important. I th hopefully by the time I get done speaking here, <clears throat> you'll realize our connections, and we've got a lot of them sitting here listening to everybody, because our uh, headquarters currently are in Sulphur Springs, Texas, and that used to be Years ago, I know that, it used to be the dairy capital of the country because it had so many dairies per capita there. And Hopkins County was actually Hopkins County, Texas. So <clears throat> I've been in Texas about 20 years and that's where I started up my business. But I'm originally from Kansas, Kansas City, grew up in Kansas City. My, my father was a railroader. And uh, so that's kind of how I come by the railroading part of it. But uh, <clears throat> and also my, my, uh, my, uh, Disclaimer for me here today is because I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so that's all my only disclaimer. So, uh, and also keep in mind as all these statistics and so forth, uh, I really believe it. Uh, what, you know, statistics they all they, everybody says they don't lie, but <clears throat> it's between us, right? It's the individual that makes this stuff happen. So, uh, I mean, failures and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to be one of those, and I hope nobody in this room will be one of those. So uh, keep that in mind. I, I, uh, I that's pretty. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, it's an it's an individual situation when it comes down to your companies and your your farms and so forth. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, uh, been in the railroad business about 20 years now. We decided to come out here. We have an operation, and almost all these statistics touched us too. So we have an operation in Odessa, Texas. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I kind of got a frog in my throat here. Um, and then out there, what we move for the Union Pacific is frac sand. And what's frac sand? That's oil, right? So fracking, the fracking business, I watch the, the price per barrel, right? Because that affects my business out there. So when the price per barrel goes up, we're hoping, you know, we want it to stay up. Obviously, we would like it to stay up because that continues to pro uh, promote fracking and, and oil explor exploration and barrels per dollars per barrel and all that kind of thing, right? So we watched that when I just got through in Sulphur Springs, Texas, just last week talking to a farmer there said that this year in Texas, the corn crop's not gonna be so good because we've had a really wet spring, crops didn't get in. So therefore what that means to me is there's gonna be more corn coming out of the Midwest, Iowa, Illinois maybe. And even up there, I know the crop was kind of late. So uh, that just means more inbound, Our my customers, uh, in in that area and on that railroad there, they're going to be bringing in more corn for their for their because uh, we supply a co-op there that uh, and some of you may even know it, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op. They uh, they're one of our customers, and so I'm in touch with those people all the time, and so it uh, uh, it makes a big deal to us. Like I said, I'm I'm watching that stuff all the time too. Just I read the articles just about the guy in Minnesota. I read that article the other day. So that, that affects us too. So we have a lot, of, I think, in common. And uh, uh, Professor Harris there, I think, 
coined a pretty good word here, back linkage. I think we have a lot of that with people here in this community. Not that we even, we haven't really even got started here yet, but uh, I was out on a dairy farm just yesterday. Great experience. I mean, I didn't grow up on a dairy farm, but I, uh, you'll come to find out, I think, railroaders and farmers have a lot in common because it's 24 seven, it's uh, hard work, it's hot work, it's, it's cold work. So it's, there's a lot of uh, similarities there. I know a, a lot of farmers, my wife's from Iowa, and so her cousins are, uh, do a lot of uh, uh, crop farming up there. So, and so I talk, we talk to them every once in a while. We joke about working on the railroad and the same as working on the farm. I mean, it's hard work and everybody has to be involved and it's a, it's a heck of a job, so. But uh, we all try to uh, make it work, of course. But the, uh, the, the back linkage here is we, we think black old terminals by coming to this area and one of the reasons we came to this area is because what, what moves better by, by rail than, than feed, crops, you know, it's a bulk commodity, right? And, and just until, and this is Drew Rochley, he's my terminal manager here in, uh, in Reno. He lives in Reno. He's been here about a year now, yep. right? And uh, him and Nate have worked really closely together because I tell you, I didn't know there was this many dairies in this area when we came out here and farms, and I don't want to leave out the beef, beef cows, uh, all that, I mean, and we're like, well, where are they getting the grain from, and how's this working, and, you know, so we think that uh, we can help a lot of the people in this area, because you all know that transportation off the, uh, transportation costs off of your, your feed, your grain, that goes strictly to the bottom line, right? There's no, talking to this, <laughs> the dairy farmer here yesterday, it's like, He's trying to figure out how to get another half a pound out of the cow, you know. I mean, and we're talking minutes. I mean, it's all about your recipes and man, there's a lot of stuff involved in a dairy farm. But if we can cut your cost to inbound, inbound your grain and whatever you need to feed, that's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm not going to sit here and guarantee all that because it it, it varies a lot. But we feel like uh, our uh, our situation where we can bring competition, which is Union Pacific and uh, Burlington North Santa Fe, to those inbound, inbound products, I think we could probably uh, really help out in that regard, let's put it that way. And so again, we touch a lot of the things coming in. We also, um, as a railroad, we have an operation in, in Sulphur Springs, Texas, an 80 mile short line, 12 mile short line in uh, Henderson, or Henderson, Texas. Um, we also have an operation in Odessa, Texas, one up and near uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then this one here, of course. And then we also do, we spot wind trains, which is uh, the, uh, you know, like the windmills in Texas. There's a lot of windmills. I'm not sure about Nevada if there's a lot of windmills up here, but that's the going rage right now. And so uh, we spot a lot of trains for off the Union Pacific of, of the wind components, the, the blades, the uh, the, the generators, all that kind of stuff. So, again, we even we're a small operation, more or less, uh, but we touch we touch a lot of these commodities, a lot of these things. You know, we ethanol was brought up up here. We transload ethanol for customers. I mean, you know. Uh, so, uh, again, back to the the back linkage. I think we have a lot of that with a lot of people in this area. Let's put it that way. So, and we help we hope that we can. Uh, uh, really help, like I said, especially in the in the feed grains and uh, so forth. That uh, you know we can help reduce your cost, uh, operating cost, by reducing those inbound costs there. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so I've been in the railroad business for 20 years, uh, and sometimes here I'm all over the map. So uh, please excuse me, but uh, we've been I've been doing this for 20 years. So, uh, and I'm no expert by any means, uh, but uh, I started off in 20 years ago. And my wife will tell you, I came home from work one day. I had a real job and came home from work. And I'm no millionaire, so don't think I, I, didn't, I didn't lay out no money to buy a railroad. I started from the ground up. And I'm a certified railroad engineer. I could go out and move a train if I have to, which I do on occasion. Not nowadays, not very often, but I started that, that's how I started the business, from the ground up. I mean, it was me, one other guy, and a locomotive. And so now we have about, again, we're not huge, we have about... 35 employees, give or take, spread out through all those operations. And so uh, 
Uh, and just like uh, you all, and that's my Texas, I've been in Texas 20 years, so I say a few you alls every once in a while. But uh, my, uh, uh, someday I could, my, my son just got, got into business with me about a year ago, or a year and a half ago now. And so, you know, again, you know, just like a lot of these dairies here and these farms, you pass it on, and that's kind of how it works, you know, which is a good thing, I think. So, but anyway, uh, uh, Drew here, uh, he'll speak here in just a second, but uh, uh, he's done a really a lot of work here in this area just because he has to develop, he has to develop the, uh, the customer base, find out who's here, just like these, I didn't know there was 20 dairies within the Fallon area. I mean, there is no way I knew that. So, and, and Drew found that out through, uh, uh, through Nate, just in their discussions, and they, they, they're talking and talking to customers and find out what's going on. So uh, we feel like, uh, and we also feel like Northern Nevada is uh, growing, of course, and people coming over from California, you know, the, the people up there in like uh, uh, Tesla and all the employment coming this way, the, the, there should be, you know, housing, building houses and all that kind of stuff. So again, we feel like we can provide the uh, local service, local rail service, uh, that the Union Pacific that, that zips through the state uh, can't necessarily, because and they don't want to. I mean, they're they're a wholesaler. We're the retailer. We try to be the retailer to to work with people and to say, hey, what what can we do? Uh, the railroad is the cheapest form of land transportation anywhere, right? So it's, and it's all about bulk and it's all about volume. And so we again with the uh, like with the, with the, we hope with the dairyman, the cattleman, or whatever, we can somehow uh, put everybody together here and say, hey, instead of buying you know, two rail cars of corn, let's buy you know 50, put it in storage, and you come get it when you want it. I mean that kind of thing. I mean it's, it's, that's pretty oversimplified, but there's that opportunity there. I think right is to put everybody together in a in a buying situation where. You, you buy with volume, you buy with some power versus individually. So, uh, and then we bring it in, we have the locations to bring it in and, and either uh, store it for you until you need it, or we offload it right into your trucks and you take it to your farm. You know, something like that too. So, uh, so there's a lot, I think there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity uh, to work with everybody here. And even though we're a railroad, I think we have a lot of similarities and railroad from the standpoint of we have a couple of short lines and that's just a that's the Union Pacific just a whole lot shorter we do we if we fall under just like all you dairymen and cattlemen we have a lot of regulations we have to ad adhere to uh, federal regulations when it comes to the FRA uh, how we train our people our equipment I mean on and on and on so again there's a whole lot of similarities and the more I watched all this this morning which is really really interesting uh, the more connections I could see with all that stuff. So, um, but anyway, um, I think, like I said, I think there's a lot of opportunity here and we hope to capitalize on it. You know, we're here to assist and make that work as best we can for people. And if you have any questions about railroads and how that works, we're pretty much in, Drew here has, uh, before I hired him, just, he's been here about a year or so, uh, we hired him from the BNSF out of California, and he worked for the BNSF for about uh, four and a half years, so he's got a lot of good background. We know railroads really well. That's our background. That's what we do. Uh, uh, we've got a lot of experience there, so don't hesitate to give Drew a call or me a call or whatever uh, when it comes to anything about rail and can you get it cheaper, can we help, you know, that kind of thing. How do you do this? Uh, we, we know should know most of those answers and if we don't we'll find them out for you so uh, anyway um, I'll let Drew speak here a minute on how him and Nate kind of got this rolling and I think had a good good uh, <coughs> help get this whole thing here today and uh, one other thing too is I think this is a great I, I told Nate earlier this is the inaugural uh, dairy uh, summit right I mean because I think this is this is what it, this is why it happens. Obviously, everybody's got their own individual farms. Everybody does their own thing, but it's good to know and where somebody like us uh, possibly can help the group uh, do some things and do some uh, help them reduce their costs if if that's all possible, you know. And uh, we're we're here to do that. So thank you very much. We'll have some questions here in a minute, but I'll I'll let Drew speak for just a second here and explain uh, what he's done here while he's been here.
Uh, well, good morning. I think we still have a few more minutes left in the morning. Um, as Wayne said, I'm Drew. I'm with Black Gold Terminals, and I am our local liaison for this area. Um, if you guys came from anywhere other than Fallon, you probably passed us on the way in. We we're on Highway 50 alternate, kind of right there on the Lyon Churchill County line. Um, as Wayne said, there's a lot of opportunity in this area. We're excited to be here. We want to be an asset to the community, and um, obviously grain and feed is what we're talking about today, but it's more than that. Um, we, we can do diesel fuel, we can do building materials, you name it, the railroad can help you do it. And we want to be a friend to the community, we want to be able to help. If you guys have problems, we are professional problem solvers. We want to help you guys figure it out. Um, and we also, you know, even for those of you guys who are doing rail, I know there's some in the room who are already getting feed via rail. We have the space, we have the capacity, we have the railroad knowledge to move those cars faster than anyone else in this area. And also to actually help you get to them and not just let them sit in sparks like they do right now a lot of times. Um, I really don't want to uh, take up too much of your time. I know there might be some questions out there, maybe not, but we really just want to make ourselves available. If there's anything we can do to help you all in any way, we hope you will reach out, take my card, take Wayne's, and. Uh, let us know if we can do anything for you. And any questions? Cool. Well, thank you. We'll bring Nate up, and uh, <clears throat> thanks again to Nate for putting this on, and the city of Fallon for helping out with the location. And yeah, we we'll turn it over to Nate. All right. Okay. I do want to thank Black uh, Blackman's Railroad and uh, Black Gold Terminal Air as well. They were a speaker sponsor. Uh, as well as our other business council members that were, uh, as I mentioned, Telegraph Coffee and Tap for this morning. We have uh, lunch coming soon, Lisa. Okay, uh, provided by City of Fallon. But I to cap to uh, cap everything here. I'm going to call up uh, well uh, T Bone, I guess now, right? <laughs> As he sat there, as he opened it up and he sat there and digested everything that we've had here, I I, I expect some. Uh, some nuggets of wisdom and if you saved your hard questions please t-bone is ready you bet. and uh i guess I'll, i guess i should explain how i got that name in high school foot baseball we went arlington i grew up i grew up in arlington was the one high school town that's how long i've been and uh that's where the cowboys play we used to play wichita falls which is 90 miles and i was lucky enough as a sophomore to make the the big team and and we, after the game, we stop at the cafeteria, and the coach says, I'll be, I'll be very judicious what you get. Of course, I ordered a T-bone steak. <laughs> I was on the blacklist. I was running laps for the next two months, and that's where I got my name. Uh, nice talking. Uh, to listen, to, hope you learn a lot about the complexity of uh, the ag sector, and also the, some of the complexities we have. And, these insurance programs that can help us get over uh, that time period. Uh, I was talking to Walter, who was in Sulphur Springs. My mother grew up in these, these Texas towns, Grand Saline, Texas, and my dad, Wills Point. They're real. Sulphur Springs used to, you can smell Sulphur Springs for 90 miles. But uh, I hope you learned a lot. If you, uh, we have, this is one issue we try to talk about looking at our ag sector. It goes up and down a lot, but we try to get more information. And George and all the guys from Texas A&M have been very helpful in that we work to have a representative ranch and dairy in that model so when there's farm bills come about, they can have a little bit of what happens in the state of Nevada because it's not uniform. Sometimes they'll come up with some policies that the sign looks very good for Louisiana. They're very detrimental to here. So, that's one of the bad, good things that we have with this modeling and, and expertise. Uh, anybody got any more questions you'd like to ask of the presenters? If not, uh, we will have lunch and then, for, uh, I don't know if I've seen any of the dairymen, we're updating the model. I have some of them say they're coming at one. If you're already here, please come by and see me and we'll start updating our, our model at one o'clock. I want to really thank Nate. You did a real good job in getting it set up. They did a lot of work and I think it's a very great success for an inaugural uh, summit. Thank you Nate.